Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about the early steam locomotives at Bingham Canyon Mine. So, stay tuned. Early steam engines at Bingham Canyon Mine. Ore was discovered at Bingham in 1863, but open cut mining didn't start until 1906. So there was 43 years of underground mining before open cut mining started. Now this is the mountain that both Utah Copper and Boston Consolidated Copper will start open cut mining on. Notice all the underground mine dumps all around the mountain. The line cut through the top center of the image is Boston Consolidated property. Just a glimpse of Utah Copper bottom right. This mountain will eventually be totally eaten away and become a massive pit. It was Daniel Jacklin's idea to mass produce copper with large steam shovels and trains. Jacklin's Utah Copper was organized in 1903. First they ran a test mill that would be the Copperton Test Mill at the mouth of Dry Fork Canyon. The ore was supplied from their underground mine. At the same time, Samuel Newhouse was running his own test mill with his ore from the Boston Consolidated Mine high up on the same mountain as Utah Copper. Samuel Newhouse's Boston Consolidated was organized May 14, 1898. It also started with underground mining. Boston Consolidated was the first to use steam shovels at Bingham. They started June 24, 1906. That's months before Utah Copper started their open cut mining. October 1906, the second steam shovel for Boston Consolidated was put into operation. Then two more, February and March of 1907. Now this photograph shows Boston Consolidated early open cut mining. Note the caved in mountainside in the background. That shows the collapse of the Boston Consolidated underground mine, what was up on that mountainside. This photograph shows Utah's copper starting their open cut mining, August 1906. They started on C and D levels. They had two Marion and one Vulcan steam shovel, four Davenport locomotives with six yard wooden dump cars. Both Utah Copper and Boston Consolidated used steam shovels and trains for stripping waste material at first. The ore came through their underground mines. Note the long building going to the Utah Copper's underground mine bottom left. When Utah Copper and Boston Consolidated Copper started open cut mining, they had to attack this large mountain to uncover its riches. They had to buy steam locomotives and steam shovels and ore cars and waste cars and miles of railroad to put in this mine. All this mining activity was done on this large steep mountain. The only examples they had of mass producing this much material were in the iron mines that Jacqueline and Gimbel visited April 1906 at the Minnesota Mesabi Iron Mine and the work going on at the Panama Canal. U.S. started working on it on May 4, 1904. They were using steam shovel to train operation. Before then, steam to train work was performed on construction jobs. The best example was early years working on building the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. Here's an early picture of steam shovel to train operation in Weber Canyon on that Transcontinental Railroad. By 1907, Utah Copper had six steam shovels, 15 small steam locomotives, and 125 dump cars with five miles of standard gauge railroad track, 65 pound steel rail. Most of these early small steam locomotives were Davenport or Porter 0-4-0 saddle tank, ranging from 11 by 16 to 13 by 16 cylinders. Now I can't find too many photos of the early Davenports this might be one with the light on the cab. Here's some of the Porter 0-4-0 steam locomotives, UCC numbers 11 to 31.
Utah Copper will purchase Baldwin 0-6-0 side tank locomotives. Now some of these were built from 1917 until 1924 and they are numbered from 71 to 88. So let's look at some of the pictures of these side tank locomotives. They look kind of neat. Number 87 came from Utah Copper's Nevada mine. Here's a couple of pictures at number 87. Boston Consolidated Copper had their own roster of steam locomotives. Many of them were narrow gauge Porter steam engines, and they numbered from 1 to 9 and 11 and 12. Number 10 was the Shea Standard Gauge steam engine. These two photographs show both narrow gauge and standard gauge track that Boston Consolidated used. Utah Copper and Boston Consolidated Copper will merge in 1910. So here's some more views of the Boston Consolidated Copper Company higher up on the mountain. A fun note is that the smaller Davenport and Porter steam locomotives were nicknamed Dinkies. In Copperfield on H Dump Line, there was a whistle stop where these small steam engines could pick up water and coal. It would be called Dinkyville Yard. The name Dinkyville would remain when they started building houses around this area. Utah Copper went to a larger Baldwin 0-6-0 UCC number 9 to 10. Here's a photo of that number 9 in front of Utah Copper's shop in the background. Then we'll just show some more pictures of these small steam engines they had at the mine at one time. Here's a 1910 photo of a Porter 0-4-0 with five steel dump cars. I'm sure the wooden dump cars didn't last long. The early steam era at Bingham, with the many steam shovels and trains, plus all the wood burning stoves in the canyon, created a lot of smoke. The older residents said when you hung your clothes up to dry, they came back dirty with soot. In the early 1920s, the steam shovels were being converted to electricity. And then in the late 1920s, the steam locomotives were being replaced with electric locomotives. That ended the steam era at the mine. They would still use large steam locomotives to pull the large ore trains to the mills, but that ended in 1948 with the building of the Copperton Low Line. This image shows a boneyard of those old steam locomotives. So that's the early steam at Bingham Canyon Mine.